I remember impatiently waiting for the dub, coming home from college, buying the Blu-ray, and watching while my mom did stuff around the house as I was chilling at home for the weekend. She remarked to me that I never forgot this, that I did nothing but smile throughout the entire thing. DBZ was back. After nearly two decades of no new Dragon Ball content, we get another DBZ slash super film. The voice acting is top notch in the dub, the story is interesting, the writing is clever, and the animation is exquisite. Although noticeably missing some of that grit that DBZ is known for, sometimes it's just too clean looking. It doesn't have that grain. And I'm not a huge fan of mixing in CGI, but they do it well, and that has grown on me considerably in the years since. What I'm still most impressed by is the world building that this accomplishes. And it's ironic that I talk about world building. It is in some ways a reboot, somewhere between Star Wars Force Awakens and Star Trek 2009. It tells an original story in a brand new timeline while playing up the nostalgia to a perfect level, even while sometimes insulting decades of lore that came before it. People can argue how they want, but for the anime fans and many other fans, including the movies, Dragon Ball GT and the movies to an extent have always been canon. Always. To have them so obviously and casually dismissed is reminiscent of Lucasfilm decanonizing the EU into Legends, kind of like the DBZ films. The Force Awakens being anti-prequel like Battle of Gods is anti-GT. Those creative decisions annoy me to this day. Many, many talks to fans just use it as ammo to further degrade some previously awesome content. Toriyama then decanonized these movies a few years later by pointlessly retelling them in Dragon Ball Super. There's some cool additions to canon, I suppose, and I appreciate that Super, later on in the Zamasu arc, canonizes with the rings that there's a whole bunch of different timelines so you pick whichever timeline you want you can argue about what's toriyama's official canon or not but really anything outside of the manga doesn't count if you look at it that way and i know i'm not talking about the movie much but this entire situation is dragon ball super's biggest problem that battle of gods also suffers from stakes beerus should be terrifying and in many ways he is but we know everyone will be okay because it takes place before the end of Z and we know how that ends. That removes some of the tensions, but the film smartly relies here more on comedy gold, some impressive deep lore and fantastic character moments. Vegeta is an absolute standout in both comedy and action. It rollicks along and the added link to the runtime, especially in the extended cut, really allows for everything to breathe and build to the somewhat anticlimactic, but still frenetically paced action packed finale. I just wish certain things weren't so vague, yet I can't help but to smile through it. And certain things are explored more in those Dragon Ball Super retellings later, but the animation's so poor. You trade out visuals for more lore, so like, what, what do you do? One of the world building aspects about Battle of Gods I don't care for, I don't love that Beerus kind of told Frieza to blow up Planet Vegeta. I feel like that robs some of the agency of what Frieza was doing that was self-serving and the horror and all that buildup. I feel like that takes away from that. I do love later on that Frieza is told not to mess with Beerus or Maja Buu. That's, that's a cool reference. Battle of Gods has this aura to it though. That's like revisiting a childhood friend. And while we do not yet know the eventual ending of how Super will turn out, what it did for the fandom in terms of creating a renaissance is truly special. It warms me on each viewing to this day. It's one of the ones that feels the most like an actual film. I hate I miss it in theaters. And I always love it for the screwball comedy, epic animation, swelling music, and for bringing Dragon Ball back into the spotlight. Even if parts of it are anticlimactic, or they don't explain as much as they should, or it really firmed in the idea that what I love and what I grew up with is now a separate canon, it's a great movie. This one's one of the harder ones to rate, but I give Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods four out of five stars. You could also call it Dragon Ball Super Battle of Gods. It's weird that it has the Z branding, but it was before Super came out too. So we're getting close to the end. Please like, subscribe, comment, share this video, and remember, always look for the good.